Now there are two great ways to help support Jono Cigars. Smokeagoodoneshop.com and on Patreon. So click those links in the description below and help support this great cigar channel. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Joe at Jonas Cigars, back for another review. Final review here in the month of July. As you can see, my hop vine has finally reached the deck's uh, pillars. And uh, now I've got a really nice green backdrop to do the rest of the reviews for the summertime. Uh, and the last review I'm going to be doing here in the month of July is one by Crown Heads that was originally supposed to be released in 2020. But because of the COVID incident, uh, everything was delayed because all these events and in-person meetings basically were nixed. And so now we are having it released from the TAA in 2021. And that is The Lost Angel by Crown Heads. This is a 6x52 box press Toro featuring Nicaraguan long fillers, a Brazilian Matafina binder, and a Mexican San Andres wrapper enclosing it all up into one cohesive whole. This is a pretty simple looking band on this one. It's kind of reminiscent of Metallica's Black album. It's all black with some embossing of the lettering and the feather logo on this band. A very nice looking cigar. Nice semi-soft box pressed. Uh, very minimal veins. Very, very tight seams. A nice double cap on the top. An all around nice uniform dark brown color. pre light aromas on this one. I'm getting a sweet cocoa and leather. Maybe some hints of brown sugar in there. Almost reminds me a little bit of Tootsie Roll candy. And more of a chocolate covered raisin coming off of the foot. All right, this one looks and smells great. Let's go ahead and get it cut, toasted, see what we can find out. Off the first puff, perfect burn, or perfect draw rather. Great smoke output. Pretty full bodied in the smoke texture. It's got a heavy, dense, fairly chewy texture. S certain amount of oil on there in the smoke texture as well. Big, bold black pepper on that retrohale and on the draw. Also getting some very dark brown sugar, almost like a molasses sweetness. There is some pretty sincere dark oak notes in here. Lots of oak, little bits of cocoa. There is a really sincere black and red pepper spice on the finish. Lots of big, bold flavors really hit you in the face off these first few puffs. All right, let this go until I get a little further into the first third. See you then. All right, 10 minutes in, well into the first third, kind of burning fast. Um, getting well into the first third here after only 10 minutes. It's a good burn line, solid light gray ash, aside from a kind of a big crack towards the very foot of the cigar. Very nice construction. All right, lots of little new flavors moving in. Um, we're getting a very rich, dark cocoa, and it's kind of mixed with the red pepper spice, hints, and I mean hints of cinnamon, barely there, very, very subtle. All in all, kind of reminds me of Mexican cocoa. Another thing I've been getting, how many of you have had New Orleans coffee? What makes New Orleans coffee special is they put, uh, in the ground coffee, they put ground chicory in it. And if there's anybody who's ever had it, it has a nice black, very fresh black pepper sort of flavor in with the coffee. It's a very, very unique coffee experience when you drink New Orleans coffee. And this one kind of reminds me of that. I'm getting that sort of fresh roast coffee with a peppery blast in there. Kind of reminds me of like a chicory blended New Orleans coffee. Really kind of cool. Uh, and out of nowhere, in the last couple of minutes or so, I'm getting a somewhat soapy lavender sort of note coming through on the finish, and it kind of lingers there on the tongue. On the retrohale. A 
just huge amounts of oak, black, and red pepper spice. It's a very nice toasty, not quite charred, but just kind of a toasty oak. So now don't think charcoal, just kind of a lightly touched by a flame sort of oak nuance in there. All right, liking this one a lot so far. By the way, draw smoke output, just fantastic. Absolutely where I want it to be. Like the, like the experience when the cigar draws like this. All right, let this go until I get about halfway through the cigar. I'll see you then. Oh, man, right in the lap. I really thought I had more time. <laughs> All right, about 40 minutes in, a little bit past the halfway point. Still burning a little faster than I would like it to, but performance-wise, it's still burning just fine. And the draw smoke output is fantastic, and it's still tasting pretty good. Chocolate and oak notes really starting to mingle nicely together. Red pepper has largely died off, and really so has some of the black pepper spice. I'm still getting kind of a black pepper flavor. Not so much of that spiciness in there anymore. Uh, the oak is really round, savory, and delicious. Really am enjoying this one a lot. Um, I like it when you get wood notes that are this balanced, and it's not just like, oh, that's woody. Ooh. No, this is a nice, pleasant wood. It's savory, lightly charred, round, balanced, toasty. I just like it. On the retro hill. Retrohale has got more of a mineral earth. Um, there's some cinnamon coming through now. Still getting some of that cocoa, and there's still some of that oak and that nice New Orleans coffee that I have mentioned in the previous segment. Really starting to get that on the retrohale. Let's see, what else have we got going on in here? Kind of a hint of molasses sweetness in there. Now I'm starting to get some more mineral earth on the draw, but it's not harsh, it's not overly bitter, it's just a nuance that's there, kind of lends itself to the balance of flavors that are going on. All right, liking this one a lot so far. For those of you who may be wondering, Crown Heads has had something of this sort of cigar in years past. It was always known as the Angel's Anvil, kind of a story about the angel who had fallen from the heavens and goes to a forger to have him make his own wings so he can return to the heavens. This is supposed to be kind of a prequel to that story, uh, The Lost Angel. This is while he spends his time in darkness before he's able to get his newly forged wings. And a fun little fact, the Angel's Anvil has the same acronym letters as the TAA. So there you go. Fun little factoid there. All right, let this go until I get towards the end of the cigar. I will see you then. All right, hour and 15 minutes in, down to the nub here. Good burn, great draw throughout. It has kind of settled down to a medium full. Started out looking like it was going to be a full body, but once you got past that first third, it really did settle down to a medium full. Flavors are pretty bold. I would probably call this a full flavored cigar, medium full in the texture. Um, here in the final third, it's dominated by a charred oak. Now it's starting to get into that realm of oak charcoal. Uh, a little bit bitter, but not out of place. Definitely some mineral earth coming through in the back end of this cigar as well. Uh, still getting a little bit more of that black pepper on the draw now. Kind of made a rebound. Uh, wasn't quite so spicy in the middle third. Starting to come back in a big way in the final third. Also getting some slight bits of leather every now and then. And there is some cinnamon spice every now and then that is subtle. It was never a very pronounced cinnamon spice. It was just kind of teasing the palate a little bit every now and then. It wasn't super, super pronounced. As for the retrohale at this point, now we get a little bit more cinnamon on that retrohale. Some red pepper spice coming back onto the retrohale as well. Still have plenty of oak. Hints of that coffee note. It's not super pronounced though. Uh, and there is ever so slightly a bit of lavender in there every now and then. Just kind of a phantom flavor note. It's kind of strange, um, but it, it, it still works with the palette of flavors that are there. It's kind of a nice little nuance. 
I like the surprise. And uh, yeah, all in all, a very, very decent cigar and one that will do the Crown Heads portfolio proud, I think. Thanks so much for joining me in another review here at the end of July. As always, don't forget to subscribe, click that icon on the bottom right corner, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can get notifications every time I release a new video. Check me out on Instagram, at Juno Cigars is my handle. See all the other written reviews that I post there. Just past 500, uh, 500 followers <laughs> on Instagram. I'm not as big of an Instagram presence as I am on YouTube, but I do put plenty of written reviews on Instagram, so check me out there. And if you want to help support the channel, two ways to do it. Head on over to smokeagoodoneshop.com, link in the description below. And if you want to join the Sago family, subscribe to the monthly Smoke a Good One newsletter, which I write myself with the collaboration of a couple other people. Head on over to Patreon. Sign up on any of the tier levels on the regular, the Sago Plus, or the Sago VIP. You will always get subscribed to the monthly newsletter, which I'm really, really happy with the way it is coming together. The next issue is coming out at the beginning of August. Thanks so much again. Hope you had a great July. See you on the next month. Till next time, everybody, smoke a good one. Thank you so much for watching Jonah Cigars. Click here on this head to subscribe. Click here to watch more.